In this screencast, we're going to learn how to design a flowchart. When you're confronted with a wordy problem that asks you to solve for one or more specific values, the first thing you should do is draw a flowchart. So what are the things that should be on this flowchart? Well, the first things you need are any of the process units that are involved. This could be a distillation column, this could be a reactor, a crystallizer, but you want to make sure that they're all drawn in there. And usually they're best drawn as squares or rectangles. I save the rectangles for absorption columns or distillation columns. In addition, you need all the streams that are flowing in and out. This is in and out of every one of the units. Then you want to write down or label all the known quantities, so anything that is given to you in the problem description. And finally, you want to label the unknowns. And usually what you want to do is have variable names that make sense to you. And one of the things, because there can be a number of unknowns and knowns in your problem, you want to keep your variables to a minimum. So let's start with a relatively easy problem. So we have an equal or equimolar, which means the same amount of moles of both methane and oxygen, and they're fed to a furnace. Okay, so we know, first of all, we have a furnace and we have a stream coming in that has methane and oxygen. Half of the methane is combusted to CO2 and H2O. So the CO2 and remaining oxygen exit the reactor. The unreacted methane, as well as the water, are sent to a condenser where the water is condensed. Both the water and the methane exit the condenser. What I've done is I've drawn the process units and the streams going in and out as I went through the problem. Now, let's see what we know and what we don't know. So we're told that 100 moles of methane are fed to the reactor. So we'll put in 100 moles of methane. We also are told that it's equimolar. So that means there's 100 moles of O2 fed to the reactor. The CO2, and I'll just call it number of moles of CO2, and remaining oxygen, NO2, exit the reactor. The unreacted methane, so we know that it's half, so that's 50 moles of methane, as well as the water, are sent to a condenser where the water is condensed. Both the water and the methane, and notice nothing happens to the number of moles, it's just that the water is condensed, exit the condenser. And what the problem is asking is to find the number of moles of water condensed. Notice here, I named each component even though they exited in the same stream. And one of the things you'll find is when you're doing reaction problems, that's a good way to keep track of all of your different products. So now let's take a look at another example. Here we have an aqueous solution of 25 weight percent calcium chloride, and it is sent to a crystallizer. So here's our crystallizer, and here's our stream going in. Enough water is evaporated, so that means that we have water coming off of the crystallizer so that five kilograms of crystals precipitate out. These crystals are suspended in an aqueous solution, and then they're sent to an evaporator where more water is evaporated and exiting the 
evaporator are 10 kilograms of crystal and 5 weight percent aqueous solution, and how much water is evaporated from each unit. So let's start here in the beginning. We have aqueous solution that is 25% or 0.25 calcium chloride. And because it's aqueous, that means the rest of this is water. Enough water is evaporated so that five kilograms of crystals precipitate out. We do not know how much aqueous solution comes in and we also don't know how much water is evaporated. However, what we do know is that we have five kilograms of crystals and an aqueous solution that we don't know the weight percent of. So we're gonna call this X of the calcium and one minus X of the calcium chloride, which is our water. The reason we can do that is that if you sum the mass fractions of your components, it's going to equal one. So they're sent to an evaporator where more water is evaporated, and exiting the evaporator are 10 kilograms of crystals and five weight percent aqueous solution and we don't know what the flow rate of this is. And how much water is evaporated from each unit? What we're asking for is what is M2 and M4. So the things to be careful of in a problem like this is, first of all, if they say that water is evaporated, you need to make sure that you have this water exiting the unit. The second thing is, and here is an example of trying to minimize the number of variables you have. Since we know that mass fractions equal one, we can write the mass fraction here of water as one minus the mass fraction of calcium chloride. And finally here, when we're exiting the evaporator, we have 10 kilograms of crystals. We know the weight or mass percents here of the aqueous solution, but what we don't know is the mass flow rate exiting here. So I hope that this gives you some idea of how to interpret these word problems and turn them into flowcharts.